Do you recognize the Geneva Conventions as applied? I, I've answered your question. No, Sam. you've had, you've evaded it, and uh, your colleague um, deceitfully um, uh, responded to it. Do you recognize the Geneva Conventions? It's a simple question. Go ahead. Do you recognize the Geneva Conventions as Go applying ahead. to Gaza? When you interrupt me, that's not. It's not, not a matter of. You. I'm, I'm not going to take question. additional a questions. To a simple question. Go ahead. You got two no, questions. I'm totally contrary. No, I didn't get two questions. You so did. you support supported two state solution, but it seems you also oppose Palestine's membership at the UN. Do you think this is contradictory? Do you have any um, update on the investigation into what Israel actually hit in Damascus on April 3rd? God. Uh, Vidal, just uh, follow up on uh, your statement earlier about the uh, your efforts to have a unified uh, respond, diplomatic respond to Iran's attack between you and your yeah. partners and allies. Is this designed to negate the need for Israel to respond militarily or regardless of that? So. Israel is going to make its own uh, decisions and its own determinations as a as a sovereign country, um, uh, irregardless of what uh, transpires in that department. We continue to believe that it is important to hold the Iranian regime accountable for what we think is uh, reckless, malign, and destabilizing behavior. You saw uh, National Security Advisor Sullivan speak a little bit to this yesterday, uh, and so we'll continue to work directly through our systems uh, multilaterally through forums like the G7 that Matt was alluding to, uh, the UN and others in ways that we uh, will hold the Iranian regime accountable. Um, go ahead. Okay, uh, thank yeah. you, Vidal. On Thursday, April 11th, the State Department spokesman, uh, Mr. Miller, said that Biden administration fully supports the rights of the Israeli people. And, and for our audience, could you explain a disconnect between the Biden administration's words and behavior how on one hand can, that you can say you fully support the rights of the Israeli people and on the other hand not fully support the rights of the Israeli people to defend themselves as they see fit and have a follow-up. Do you have a specific example of how uh, we, they, we are not encouraging them to defend themselves? Well, so, you know, specifically about, you know, not allowing them or, the, the issue of uh, a counterattack against Iran and not, uh, not allowing them to easily go into Rafah to take care of Hamas, uh, delaying this. Uh, Israel could have been in Rafa a long time ago, so the audience really concerned about the disconnect about that they see, uh, uh, you know, the Biden administration preventing Israel well, Doc, from, from going I, I, to Rafa for these operations. I, I'm going to interrupt you a little bit. I think you are um, in a can't, frankly, in a misleading way, uh, uh, conflating two very uh, different issues. Uh, one, in the context of Israel defending itself against um, attacks from Iran, uh, we believe that they have every right to do that, and they should. And you saw the United States um, echo, underscore that commitment to Israel's security and its self-defense uh, this past weekend. Uh, and that is a commitment we believe is unwavering and it is ironclad. And we will continue to feel and believe strongly in Israel's ability to defend itself, in its ability to feel secure um, in its region. Uh, but separate from that, in this conversation of Rafa, it is important, again, that we underlie when we're talking about Rafa, we are talking about more than a million people uh, seeking refuge. We are talking about a region that is continues to be an important conduit for humanitarian aid entering Gaza, and it continues to be a uh, access point of uh, safe departure for foreign nationals. So yes, we believe very strongly that any military operation in Rafa in the Rafa region uh, should require significant, serious planning that addresses these three major areas of concern. That but continues to be something we feel strongly about. Along that, our audience is really concerned about the pressure on Israel to accept the two-state solution that you were talking about. And, and so, um, so what is your response to, to our audience that really believes that it's a way of uh, hurting Israel when many Israeli people do not support a two-state solution is the idea of sharing their land with terrorists, uh, specifically uh, you know, with, with Gaza, with Hamas, that Hamas uh, blew their opportunity 
to to really have a peaceful area there. Well, I and, hope uh, so. I hope you're not. I ho I really sincerely hope you're not making the claim that um, all Palestinian people are terrorists because oh, that no. certainly is not the the case. Um, and quite respectfully, I'm less interested in uh, what your audience is interested in more uh, what we think is uh, good policy and what we think is beneficial to peace and security uh, in the region. And that we have long felt continues to be uh, a two-state solution. That has been our dire belief prior to the events of October 7th, and it will continue to be so. We think that that, that is the only credible path forward uh, that assures um, equal measures of peace and security for the Israeli people and the Palestinian people. Well, along with that, what do you say? I'm going to move people around. That you've gotten three questions already. Willie, that. you've had your hand up. God. Um, sorry, Lenny. Uh, could you have any um, update on the investigation into what Israel actually hit in Damascus on April 1st? I don't have any updates for you on the status of that facility or anything like that. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you, Vedant. So you supported two state solution, but it seems you also oppose Palestine's membership at the UN. Do you think this is contradictory? I don't think these things are contradictory at all. Uh, again, as it relates to the United Nations, I'm not going to preview our vote. And as I said, we're continuing to engage with our partners on the Security Council. Uh, we remain uh, unwaveringly committed to a two-state solution and continue to feel that the only path forward is a comprehensive, lasting peace is going to be through direct negotiations between the parties. And that uh, continues to be uh, what we think is the best path forward. And when you say a two-state solution, solution is it like uh, a Palestine is it a Palestinian state based on 1967 borders with East uh, Jerusalem as the capital what is your understanding of the two-state solution so um, I don't have a change in definition of how we have been talking about a, a two-state solution. We've been talking about this as uh, a, a, a Palestinian state for the Palestinian people and, of course, the state of Israel um, with uh, the boundaries uh, bounded by uh, 1967, uh, I believe, mutually agreed upon um, land swaps as well, with the status of Jerusalem being a final status uh, negotiation issue. Just one more on yeah. Turkey. Do you have any readout of... On Turkey? You just said? Turkey, yeah. yeah. Uh, any read out of uh, Under Secretary John Bass's travel to Tur Turkey? I, I don't. Uh, I don't, but I'm happy to, to check and see if we've got any additional information there. I know, uh, just to say broadly, Turkey has been uh, an important partner of ours in a number of key lines of efforts, uh, uh, under, acting under Secretary Bass, um, as you all know, used to be ambassador to Turkey, so he has a lot of deep and close relationships there, and have no doubt that he's engaging on some important issues, whether it relates to peace and stability in the Middle East, but also continuing to engage with our partners in Turkey on issues relating to NATO and Ukraine. Uh, go ahead in the back. Yeah. Uh, two questions. I have one on Haiti and one on. Uh, can we stay uh, on the region? And I yeah, can try I and come back for, to you. I have one for the yeah. West Bank as well. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I keep asking this question and trying to rephrase it in regards to the Palestinian Authority. Mm -hmm. Within the jurisdiction of Area A, does the Palestinian Authority or Palestinian law enforcement have the right to arrest settlers that that are? Uh, attacking Palestinian homes or Palestinians? Uh, that'll be, that's a question uh, I would better refer you to the uh, PA and uh, uh, officials within COGAT. I don't want to get into uh, the specifics of jurisdiction um, uh, in that level of detail from up here. Uh, go ahead, Jacob. Uh, earlier today, Israel's COGAT published footage of what it said are contents of 700 trucks worth of humanitarian aid that is sitting on the Gaza side of Karim Shalom crossing, waiting to be delivered. Kogat said it has scaled up its capabilities over the past several weeks, but that the UN has failed to, to deliver its job in delivering aid. Ambassador Satterfield said last week that the biggest obstacle at this point is UN and international agencies bringing more trucks into Gaza in order to distribute the aid. Um, so where does this stand? The US regularly does urge Israel to boost its aid efforts, but are you willing to call on the UN also to improve its capabilities to uh, deliver the say that's piling up on the Gaza side of the border? Um, look, broadly, 
the distribution of aid uh, within Gaza continues to be something that we're working closely on with partners in the UN and what partners um, in other uh, additional uh, humanitarian organizations. That's something we're going to continue to uh, work with them closely on because it's a priority. I don't have any updates to offer on uh, immediate um, uh, steps that have been taken publicly, but uh, we think that that's an important uh, thing that needs to be addressed and we'll work closely continuing with the UN. Go ahead. So related to that, yeah. Biden has ordered this pier, and it's mm -hmm. going to be set up in the next couple of weeks. Is the State Department confident that you're going to find the aid groups willing to unload that gear and that those aid supplies and distribute it? Uh, I don't want to uh, get ahead of the process here, but look, when it comes to the distribution of aid within Gaza, uh, we have found uh, partners who have been willing to engage, willing to uh, uh play a role in the uh, disseminating of that aid, particularly um, as Jacob was speaking to, making sure that um, that aid gets from places like warehouses to uh, its endpoints uh, within Gaza, uh, and have no doubt that we will continue to be able to find partners to uh, cooperate with when it comes to the maritime corridor. But I don't want to get ahead of this process. Michelle. Yeah. Do you have any comments on the escalation of fighting between Hezbollah and uh, uh, Israel? And do you expect this conflict to be broadened? Uh, we would hope and encourage not, Michelle. At every corner, we have um, stressed our uh, strong desire and importance of making sure that this uh, conflict isn't uh, widened. Um, we've made that clear to our partners in Israel and to other regional inter interlocutors, and we'll continue to do so. Um, go ahead, Alex. On the region or anything? Uh, let me stay on the region before I move away. Sam, go ahead. Um, Euromed monitor, human rights monitor, reports that Israel is using drones to lure residents and then shoot them. Uh, they explain the sounds of women screaming and babies crying were heard late at night on both Sunday and Monday when some of the residents went out to investigate and tried to help. They were shot at by Israeli quadruple, uh, quadcopter drones. The sounds they heard were, in fact, recordings played by the Israeli drones with the intent of forcing the camp residents out into the streets where they could be easily targeted by snipers and I, other I've, I've not I've not seen that report, Sam, so I'm not going to uh, comment on it. But uh, broadly, not relating to this particular circumstance at all, because, again, I haven't seen the report and I'm not sure if it's accurate or verifiable. Uh, at every conversation that we have with our partners in Israel, we continue to stress the moral and strategic imperative that they have uh, to uh, work on deconfliction mechanisms and to ensure that uh, civilian harm is minimized in every which way possible. And we'll continue to stress that every way we can. Will you Go look ahead. at this report? I am sure we'll look at this report, Sam. I don't have any comment for it on it right now. Do you recognize the Geneva Conventions as applying? I, I've to answered your question, Sam. No, you've Go ahead. You've evaded it, and uh, your colleague um, deceitfully um, uh, responded to it. Do you recognize the Geneva Conventions? It's a simple question. Go ahead. Do you recognize the Geneva Conventions as Go applying ahead. to Gaza? When you interrupt me, that's not. It's not, not a matter of. You. I'm, I'm not going to simple take question, additional simple questions. To a simple question. Go ahead. You got two no, questions. I'm totally contrary. No, I didn't get two questions. You did. You asked. No. You, you you asked I a question asked about a question your report, and you asked a follow up. Please go ahead. Another, and you're not ref you're refusing to answer it. Go ahead. Sir. Do the Geneva Conventions apply to Gaza or not? Go apply to everywhere on the planet except for the Palestinians. Isn't that right? Isn't we that continue to stress everywhere and everywhere that Geneva international Geneva humanitarian law apply. needs to be abided by and respected. Go Do ahead. Do the Geneva Conventions apply? You are now interrupting your colleague. Go no, ahead. I'm interrupting you. I'm not Go ahead. interrupting you. I'm insisting on an answer to a critical question. Go ahead, sir. I'd like to ask so, uh, so about the sanctions the against 